We're in the pits the night before the big race in Pietro Ligura and we're doing a bike check on Martin Mays' GT Force. Tell it's race day tomorrow because riders are relaxing. I can smell the barbecue, they're resting their legs, and also there's fresh rubber on the bike ready to roll first thing in the morning. So, this is a GT Force carbon frame LTS. Some of the, those old school mountain bikes like myself will know that name from old GT bikes. Linkage tuned suspension. Um, this bike uh, is running mixed wheel sizes, so 29 up front, 27.5 on the rear. Martin's running the Fox 36 fork up front, 150mm travel, same on the rear. So probably one of the more shorter travel bikes you'll see here on the Enduro World Series. Especially with a fork, you see most people will over fork a bike, so at least have 10mm more travel, 160 on the front. Martin's keeping it nice and low, because you'll also see that top headset cap is completely slammed. As a pro bike, you often see riders' names on their bikes. We've got some Martin May stickers with a Belgian flag, but also as it's an EWS race, you get these marking stickers as well. So one on the fork, one on the front end of the frame, one on the linkage, and two on the rims. So basically, that just marks those products. So if for any reason they get changed during the race, like he'll break a rim, something like that, you actually get a penalty for doing that. So those parts all need to stay on the bike for the race. Front of the bike, we've got a race face cockpit, so an Atlas stem, like I said before, absolutely slammed. It's got some cool graphics on there. It's actually sort of uh, some contour lines, says Garbanzo. Hmm, not seen that before, pretty cool. Uh, also, some uh, race face 6C carbon bars, look pretty wide to me. Got that one up tool uh, into that steer tube of the fork. A slicey front mudguard, it's been really dry here for the last right. ages in uh, this part of the world. So I wonder why we're still running that. It might be worth keeping off the yeah. dust even to be fair. We've got a Shimano Saint brake, so again we're seeing this quite a lot in the pits, a downhill brake on an enduro bike. Like I said with the 150mm travel, I think you know we're seeing a bit of different sized things on this bike compared to most people going down to the brakes. So we've got Shimano Saints, big uh, four-pot downhill brakes, but only paired with 180 rotors where we've seen, I guess the norm is probably 200. We've seen on Jack Moore, he's gone bigger than that, up to 220s. So pretty small. Also the Fox 36, we saw last year that uh, Martin was actually using prototype 38. So interestingly, he's gone for a, a slam front end. I asked Martin, his mechanic, he said, for the 154, they just want the 36. More interesting numbers. This bike is a 29er, supposed to be front and rear. Martin's thrown a 27.5 in the rear, just to sort of chop the bike out that little bit more. Obviously you get loads of clearance as well, not that really that's much of a concern these days to be honest. More Shimano parts, got the XTR 12 speed shifter. Um, tell me when you get bored of numbers, but I find this quite interesting as well, that Martin's running quite a small cassette on here. Uh, we haven't got one of those big wide range cassettes, it's a 1045, so a much smaller, big ring there than most people use. Chain ring actually 32, so potentially you know, a bit smaller than most other people as well. XTR rear mech. A Fox Float X2 rear shock air with that piggyback to match the Fox fork up front. You see where Martin stores his spare tube with a bit of electrical tape. Quite a nice uh, size, actually just fits right in there. Um, running the XTR cranks, 170mm and the Crank Brothers Mallet E, looks like the LS to me, it's a long spindle so it spaces that pedal a bit further away from the crank than the standard ones. Quite interestingly actually, if you spin the crank, I can't believe how nicely that spins, super smooth. Hardly any resistance in there, so I'm not sure what's going on with the bottom bracket or the free hub, but these are Stan's flow wheels, of course 29 front, 27 and a half rear. Actually that front rim's got that really square profile to it, not quite so square on the back. This is an EX3. Up front is a ZTR flow Mark III. Tires are looking super fresh, ready for the big fight tomorrow. Uh, Schwalbe's super gravity casings, got a Magic Mary up front and a big Betty on the rear. Also got that green uh, Cushcore valve on the back, so it must be running the insert, I'm guessing. Up front, looks to me like Martin's running an inner tube. That doesn't look like a tubeless valve to me. Finishing touches, uh, we've got some ODI grips, we've got the Fox transfer dropper post fabric saddle with a very fancy looking carbon rail on there and what I do like actually this king cage, titanium bottle cage. Martin, race day tomorrow, you ready? 
Yeah, I'm ready for it. Uh, practice went very well. It was a big day, very hot, but uh, I feel like I'm pretty ready for it and uh, yeah, ready to battle. Nice, your bike looks ready, super fresh. I've got some questions. I, I think of all the enduro bikes I've seen, yours sort of bucks the trend in a few places. Especially at the front end, most people like to sort of slacken their bikes out by sticking a 10 mil longer fork on the front. You're running 150 front and rear and a pretty slammed stem as well. Do you like to get forward on the bike? Yeah, I do. Um, so first of all, for the travel, um, back in 2018, uh, Fox testing with Lusa, we had um, two of them bikes. One was a mullet, like this one, mm -hmm. and one was a full um, 650, but with 170 mil of travel in the front instead of 150 with a mullet. Obviously, we wanted to keep the BB at the same height, so that's all we had to do to make it, you know, the same geometry. Um, and uh, straight away, we were faster with a mullet bike, uh, so we decided to, you know, go a little bit down in terms of travel with the fork, um, but have more grip up the front. Yeah. Um, and uh, it seems like uh, it's been paying off, you know, when you see all the people riding with mud bikes these days, um, it's, it's pretty awesome, yeah. Um, regarding the stem, um, I'm too small to ride an XL, and uh, I'm riding, I'm, I'm kind of in between both sides, yeah. Um, so we decided to uh, put a 55 mil stem to to get quite a bit of reach right. and be comfy on the bike. Um, but overall, it's a very efficient bikes. It's not the lightest. You can see the back end. This cab is aluminium, but there is a lot of flex and it's very easy to handle. So alloy rims as well. Is that something that you you like the feel of particularly? Yeah, I like I like a bike with a lot of flex yeah. uh, because it's a lot more forgiving than yeah. a carbon bike with carbon rims. Uh, and I feel like you know the more energy you can save from the flex is the more energy you're gonna have uh, towards the end of the stage. So uh, it's uh, like I say, it's not the lightest, but uh, uh, through the years with the experience, we find out that you know the more flex you have on the bike. Uh, the more forgiving it is and the more efficient it is on longer stage. And of course, there are some times when actually uh, your know, weight in a bike will work with you. If you're riding through rough, flat, chundery stuff, then actually, you know, you've got extra momentum. It's funny that you say that, you've obviously tested it, but you know, many people, brands, racers will say that 29 is just faster. But obviously for you, you've, you know, do you think that just suits you or do you think maybe most people could benefit from the mixed wheel size? Uh, it's, it's very hard. To, to say if a lot of people would benefit uh, from the mud bike or not. But for myself, what I feel is, you know, I've got a long body, but relatively short legs. And I feel like, you know, my rear wheels never kick on my bump. Uh, and I get very comfortable with that bike, with the setup that it is. And I feel like, you know, coming into turns, I feel like it's easier to turn the bike and be more reactive on yeah. the bike and you know enduro is all about you know we only ride one one mm. stage on practice day and straight away we have to race so you have to be very quick and uh, make decision with the less time possible yeah i guess it's a constant improvisation it's not down or where you know every inch of the track you're gonna you like say move the bike around a lot yeah Small discs as well, relatively small. Most people, I guess, are running 200s. Is that, I guess, you got a big brake, small disc? Yeah, we, we find out that with smaller discs, we have uh, actually more precision on the braking. Uh, and also, I'm never, I'm never dragging my brakes too much. Yeah. Uh, so I'm never cooking the disc brakes. So uh, right. we decided to, you know, why not save a little bit of weight uh, on really the disc? It's cool. Uh, and you're not running a big cassette. Most people are running a, you know, the arms race of 10, 51, 52. You've got a 45 on there. That yeah, does a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've got a 32 in the front. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like, you know, if you get steeper than, uh, than that, you might as well walk, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, and once again, the 45 uh, cassette, uh, we are able to have a lighter cassette. 
but also the length of the derailleur is shorter, so less risk to hit it on the rock. Cool. Um, looks like you run the cush core in the rear. That looks to me like you're running an inner tube up front, or am I wrong? No, no, it's uh, fully tubeless right, okay. in the front, and we're running the cush core for safety in the back. Awesome. Thanks, Martin. Super interesting, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Thanks very much, guys.